<laughs> Good afternoon. Um, my name is Christoph Bels. I'm going to talk about using LNT, which is one of the LLVM sub projects, to track performance. Uh, for last year in the same dev room. I already talked about this topic a bit. Uh, last year I talked about how to uh, improve automatically tracking the performance of the LLVM generated code. And there were, um, what did I say last year? Let's see. Uh, so I talked about improvements that were needed in two LLVM projects. One is LNT, the other the test suite. The test suite contains lots and lots of open source packages that uh, get used to test LLVM with. LNT is, I would say, test infrastructure, software, lots and lots of scripts, a database, analysis tools uh, to look at test and benchmark results. So I presented a range of ideas last year. A few improvements were already implemented. I also presented a range of ideas that still had to be implemented. Since then, most of them have been implemented. And I think that by now, uh, Actually, it's, it's much nicer to track uh, performance with less human effort uh, on top of trunk. And so I'll hope to give you a demo uh, to hope to uh, convince you that indeed we've made a big step forward. So just another copy paste of my conclusion slide from last year. Um, it's a little bit unreadable. I'll read it out for you out loud. Um, uh, there were a number of aspects that I thought in a continuous integration system, we really would like to have this property to be the case. And then uh, one of the properties was um, when it flags up an issue, it should flag up the issue so that it's actionable, meaning as a developer, uh, you get the mail or any kind of notification and then you know what to do to go and fix the problem. Uh, last year, I thought it was improved, but that the red color in the arrow means uh, it's still very far from where we'd like it to be. Um, another property would be to require as little as possible human effort last year. Also, my feeling, my experience is still a bit of improvement, but still not where we need it to be. And then the last bullet point is really a continuous integration system um, should help to, to enable a culture of everyone working, in this case, on LLVM to actually act on a delta. Uh, you committed something because of that some correctness or performance regressed. Um, it's natural for you to just go and act on it so that regression goes away. And I think last year, well, my, assess my personal assessment then was last year we hadn't implemented any improvements, hadn't seen any improvements on that just yet, um, and still far from where we would like it to be. Um, Spoiler alert, I think for all three of these, we've made some improvements. Uh, I'll show you some details later on. Uh, I also ended with saying, consider using LNT as a performance tracking infrastructure. Um, I think since last year, we made it a little bit easier to actually go and do so. I'll give a few more details. So first on uh, making sure that continuous integration system actually signals things up that are actionable and require little human effort. Um, let me do a demo of what we typically do. I'll sit down. Um, for the demo, please shout out questions as I go along. If uh, something isn't clear, um, I've been doing this on and off almost day by day for quite a few months, so I might jump over some issues that are not obvious. If something is not, not obvious, please shout out. So what I'm showing here is uh, something that's called the LNT daily report page. So this is an LNT web server running. Lots of uh, performance measurement data has been uh, pumped into that database. And this uh, report page summarizes issues that seem to be important on that particular day. Now this date is from April last year. I picked this date because it has a few examples that are easy to explain in the demo. Uh, so there's a, the resolution on this monitor isn't great, so things look a little, um, on normal resolutions, things look a little bit nicer. Um, so there's a bunch of machines that uh, do run tests, and you can see from here the past seven days whether they did submit some test results or did, did not submit any test results. Um, 
In LNT, there's a number of metrics that can be tracked. In this case, uh, nothing uh, special was flagged up for a code size metric or a score metric. But for the execution time metric, uh, things did get flagged up. Um, before jumping to the biggest regressions we see, maybe I'll just want to show uh, this one. So this is a, a particular program in the LLVM test suite where the LNT system says, oh, today it seems this has regressed, the performance of that program has regressed 6% compared to LLVM top of trunk yesterday. So one of the things that we added as part of, that was also discussed last year, um, is we have these little spark lines. So what you see here is how the performance evolved over the past seven days. So just on this overview page, you get an immediate feel for how the performance evolved in the past seven days. And we also do multiple runs uh, per day. I hope everyone can see this. Maybe I'll scroll up a little bit. So we also do multiple runs per day. Uh, let me try to zoom in a little bit. Um, and uh, one of the features that I don't know was already implemented last year is we also have this background color on the spark line. And actually, that background color just represents uh, the, uh, if the code that got generated by LLVM changed or didn't change on that particular day. So it's computed from a hash of the, uh, the L file that got produced. Which means that in this case you can interpret, so this is a data point from today, that's a data point from yesterday, the day before. They all have the same background color, which means that the actual code produced by LLVM didn't change on these days, even though the system reports different performance points. Immediately here you can uh, ignore that because you know it's my system that's a bit noisy, uh, the code didn't actually change. There's, there, there isn't any, actually any uh, regression here. So already that helps save a lot of developer time because with just uh, a glance, we can decide, ah, we can ignore this one. This is just noise in the system. And there's the top points as well, which are identical to the current points. That means it's multimodal. Yeah, it's a bit of a multimodal program. Um, I also had uh, presentations on that on the US and URLVM last year to that go much deeper into what the causes may be of that and, and how to handle that. So if we now look at a real regression, uh, so the top regression here says on three, three different cores, happens to be a Cortex-A53, A57, and Cortex-A9 on all of these three cores, the performance regressed by 188%, clearly not good. Uh, here, 75 percent. We can also see the, the background colors here changed compared to yesterday. So there was some actual change there. Let's go and investigate that. So um, let's click on the link for that's the biggest regression, the A53 one. Where we jump to now is the long term um, plot for how performance of this particular program on that particular machine evolved over time. If I would have clicked this on the 15th of February, the chart would have stopped here. So of course now we're already uh, quite a few months later, so there's some, a lot more data points. But yeah, you already see here that this is a major outlier. Let's go and investigate here this. Well, we are now jumping to uh, this particular run on that particular machine. So a whole bunch of programs from the test suite got run as part of one run on that particular machine, and we have an overview page here. So yes, once again, this program uh, pops up. 188% performance difference. Yeah, we really need to go and investigate here uh, this. So with some of the improvements that we made since last year, what, you, what we now also have is as part of the test suite runs, um, you can collect um, Linux perf profile information, so that gets also pumped into the database. Uh, and if you go here, you, could, you will uh, see an overview of that. So already at the top, we see indeed the number of cycles spent have, has increased a lot. You also get a summary of, in this case, branch misses, cache misses, so like the headline, microarchitectural uh, events that might cause a performance difference. Um, and then you have the different functions. The hottest function, probably that's the one that where some code generation was different. Let's look at the hottest function. It's the old version. This is the new version. 
Um, and so here, what you see is uh, site by site, the output that you would get if you would run this under Linux perf. <clears throat> so at this point, this also helps the, the developer efficiency if before you just knew 200% performance difference, you would have to go and rerun the data under Linux perf to get it. Uh, if it gets stored in a database automatically, that's On just... A similar machine with a similar yeah, setup. exactly. So this, this just saves a lot of time. I think before we, well, it typically goes for a few hours. Uh, it, you, you end up spending a few hours unless you do, this is the only job you do and nobody wants to do this job as the only job they're do, doing so. If we just scroll through it, we see low percentages. Oh. And here we see some hot codes. This is the hot code apparently in the uh, old version and some hot codes in the new version. Um, so sometimes this view already, you, you already see the instructions. Uh, it can be, uh, it takes a bit of time to investigate. So one extra improvement we've done on top of that is in the uh, web interface, we've put a bit of JavaScript to uh, reverse engineer the control flow graph. So what you see now is the control flow graph structure of this whole program. Um, and let me, uh, so what you see here, uh, every gray block is a basic block. You see the arrows jumping between them. Uh, you see, oh yeah, there's, there's that hot basic block before. Actually all the hot code is in a single basic block. Now we know that. All the hot code also here is in a single basic block. We have to compare those two. There's a percentage here, 98% of the time is spent in the single basic block. Uh, n now it's 99%. Actually, let's change instead of relative numbers, let's go look at absolute numbers. So now it's much clearer that there's a performance difference. Before, we spent about 430 million cycles in that basic block. Now it's 700 million cycles. Um, yeah, the, the resolution of this, so you know that you have to look at these few instructions here, that's where it happened. The resolution of the screen isn't high enough, um, but I hope you'll believe me that here you see a division instruction, and in the old code there's no division instruction. Most developers know division instructions can be costly. That's probably the, the thing that caused the difference. <clears throat> No, oh, it's this yeah. UDIF, so an integer yeah. division instruction that before probably got, uh, yeah, yeah it's maybe it's a division by a constant, who knows. Uh, so I think that's, uh, that might be the end of my demo if I remember correctly. So I think in the, in the course of maybe five to ten minutes, we've jumped from, uh, let's see what yesterday's run looked like. We had a, a big performance delta. We ignored some pieces of noise, and now we see this is the code, gener code that changed and it caused a performance difference. And you've done something that Perf still doesn't have on ARM OER to support, which is to understand the jumps and the yeah. blocks. Um, yeah, I've, as far as I know, someone might be working on that. I don't know. No, as the last no. time I asked was a few months ago, and there's no, there's no support. Yeah, anymore. so for what it's worth, this is a really, really, really simple reconstruction of the control flow graph. It just has some regular expressions. This looks like a branch, so maybe oh, it's it, the PC. Uh, and um, so it's it's probably 99% accurate, but for just looking at this, it's it's good enough. Um, so what we've learned with going in there, we understand what the code difference is from one day to the next. However, in LLVM, typically about 100 commits per day. I can stand up again. Uh, typically about 100 commits per day, so you don't yet have the specific commit. If you look at the commit revisions, you already know a division got changed. Sometimes you can just guess which commit it was. Uh, quite often, one other technique we use is we use LLVM lab bisect. That's a tool that's uh, in Zork now. So what that tool can do is if uh, from all of your build machines you store continuously, it builds top of trunk clang. So you have uh, a whole bunch of Clang binaries available. If you store them into a build cache on a separate server, that particular script uh, can fetch the different revisions um, from that server. And then if you add uh, a script to it saying, this is a problem problematic uh, generated code, that's a, a good generated code, it can bisect to a specific commit. Um, you can follow the, the links for more documentation. The documentation is actually really nice. So in combination uh, with LNT that, we, that I showed, 
Uh, we understand what the code chain difference is with just a few minutes of looking around. Depending on the, uh, the size of your benchmark, this bisect will run quicker or, or, sh or, or slower, but this bisect can point you to a specific commit. So quite quickly, you get to the point, this commit caused that code chain difference and it caused that percentage of uh, so performance you delta. Your stage two copies or just stage one? Uh, we keep we keep one version, not multiple. So we keep just the Clang binaries produced by one bot. But it's uh, just stage one. Yeah. Because the one problem we had is that most of the problems we find are in stage two. So the, the, the stage ones are, are easy to just revert, but the stage two ones we have to investigate. Yeah. And then the Clang uh, LLVM lab bisect means you know it, it doesn't help at all because yeah. we still have to be at stage two anyway. So for, yeah, you could, you could well, so in LLVM lab, uh, you just put, uh, I think, uh, I believe it's, um, you store the machine name that produced the Clang binary, so you could just store all of them. You could say, these are stage two binaries. If you have a fast machine that could do stage two builds really fast, you can have a really high, nice resolution. Um, pop, pop, pop. Oh yeah, so in the, sorry. Question? Oh. <laughs> so in the, for the specific problem we were looking at here, um, so we ended up sharing that information um, within 24 hours of this calling committed. This was detected. We found out what it was. Uh, how do we share that information? Well, just send an email to the, in, on the LLVM commits list, every commit gets an email. Just reply to that one. It gets to the original author saying, we found something here. Um, luckily, we also s saw the problem on one of the public bots. Uh, so then it's extra nice, the, the original developer, if he works at another place, uh, they can also see that, uh, that particular problem. And yeah, got fixed within 48 hours, and regressions are cheap if they get fixed quickly. Really nice outcome. Um, so I, let me move back on my claims. So I think with the demo, I hope that we, it, the, the improvements that I've shown here in LNT, it does help to, to signal issues in a way that is actionable. We ended up sending an email quickly uh, and require a little effort while actually we all did the analysis together in a few minutes. So now moving to uh, enabling a culture of acting on deltas. Um, so I think we're, we're starting to see some more signs of there's an improvement there. Uh, at least, uh, I think it was Arno actually sending the email last April, that particular one, and you see it gets acted on, so it's, there, there's an improvement compared to a number of years ago. There's probably a lot more that could be done to, to just make it easier f uh, to act on deltas. My list of ideas is, yeah, it would be nice if more of these performance reporting bugs would be public so more people can look at the performance results. Um, at the moment, there's one public LNT server, so what I showed here was an L a top of trunk LNT server running on my laptop. The public one runs a version that's quite old, um, so that uh, we need to find a way to make sure that someone can maintain that public LNT server instance. Um, after that works, then some of the things people notice is in the test suite, there's about 500 programs. They don't cover all possible use cases of LLVM. Um, so, um, more code needs to be added. Um, actually, I see st uh, some improvements there. Uh, Bitcode files got added from the Halite front end, which um, there must be someone in the room who knows much more about Halite than I do, but it's a front end producing IR code directly, not coming from Clang, so it's nice. Might have some different idioms. Uh, we also see the start of some benchmarks representing HPC specific use cases a bit more. Um, but in the end, it's also important that when we add more tests, the whole test suite doesn't run much longer since then we lose resolution. Uh, it's really nice now that the test suite all in all doesn't run that long. You even on very slow systems, you get feedback uh, relatively quickly so you can get multiple data points per day if you want to. And I think the holy grail is for uh, correctness issues, we now have bots automatically emailing uh, committers if they regress a correctness issue. I think the holy grail is we want to get to automated emails on performance deltas also. But you have to have re a really high signal to noise ratio, so there have to be very, very few false positives, otherwise developers will just ignore the bot. So. You have to automate 
operates all the way from understanding the performance yeah. to understanding what caused it to which yeah. commit it is. Yeah. yeah. But then you saw how much human effort was involved here. I think we're getting close to, for some kinds of performance issues, the one I demonstrated, we probably could automate that one. Uh, but yeah, the, there's always going to be lots of like deltas where even between different compiler developers, there will be a difference of interpretation saying, no, this is a regression. No, this is actually how it should be done. And so. Yeah. So about the test we taking longer, I think that's like self-defeating because we want more tests. Yeah. The problem is to give us a resolution. So one way out of this will be to, in the way we do today, say test set is the benchmarks. We could say test set is benchmarks one, two, and three, and then you separate into three equally running, etc. Oh, we could and parallelize the test suite. This yeah, very that's also possible. Um, there are, I, well, I, as part of another presentation I gave earlier, I still believe that we could make the test suite run ten times faster and still find all of the problems we have right now and not have any more noise. Like there's a few programs in the test suite that take quite a long time if you just make those, just say instead of a thousand iterations, run for 10 iterations, we'll still find the same problems. Yeah. Uh, we just have it at a higher resolution. It's a bit of work. Use a non-LLVM project. So I think out of everything that I showed here, um, there wasn't anything specifically for LLVM. It's for a code generator. There's many code generators. So how good uh, is, how easy is it to use LNT and other code generators? Well, the interface into the LNT server, so what I demonstrated, um, is a JSON file. So all the information is in JSON file. Uh, that has been documented since last year. So if you have uh, your own test system that you've invested lots of effort into, as long as you can produce your, uh, your results into a JSON file, you can input this and you have all of the analysis you have here. Um, so I can just say that at least at ARM, we have the LLVM team using this, obviously. We also have uh, the GCC team who started using it and we have uh, a team working on a product called Cycle Models who are developed, as part of that, they're developing a very log to C++ compiler. They're all, they also started using this. Just to show that, there's, if you have a code generator, my feel is that you could use LNT if you think from what you saw from the demo, uh, it's useful. Um, what else is there? So the profile view uh, that I've shown, it means you have to run, if you run your program multiple times to make sure that you've got statistical significant results. Uh, one of these runs have to be done under Linux perf to get the perf profile that has to be stored. Um, so what we've done in the test suite is that with the CMake slash litification of the test suite, which means you compile the programs with CMake and then lit is used to run them, um, it now becomes straightforward. If you add extra benchmarks, you just drop in a subdirectory which with also a CMake file then uh, out of the box it will, it will run multiple times, it will invoke Linux Perl for you, collect all the data in the right way. So if you add more benchmarks to the test suite uh, for, your, for maybe your non-public needs, you can do that without lots and lots of boilerplate as long as you have the CMake file that describes how to build your benchmarks. And test suite is already well built to add <laughs> spec and embassy and all that. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So yeah. So we've added quite a few EVA benchmarks beyond that to, the, to, to these kinds of runs. So in summary, I think there was a, a well, without necessarily that much work, I, I think in using LNT, there was a big improvement compared to last year. Um, documentation has improved. Probably there's still quite a bit to be done because documentation gets written by the people who use it most actively and then you, can, you get blind spots for things that might not be obvious. So if, um, uh, so if you would like to try LNT and you find some of the documentation isn't, uh, isn't perfect, then yeah, do please uh, raise it either via email or in the LLVM bug tracker on your component LNT. Or if you do use it and you find some issues not, uh, there are some issues, do please file uh, tickets in there. And that's all, any questions? Great, oh, you don't? 
How does it scale? Uh, how can I answer that? Um, so we use it internally in, uh, in ARM and put our performance data into a single database. Actually, so you've, th there's two underlying databases that can be used, Postgres or SQLite. So far, we store everything in SQLite. We don't have a huge issue with it. Uh, maybe the first person accessing the web interface in the morning, some of it needs to be cached in. It takes a little while, but once it's cached in, uh, it works. Um, well, um, so all in all, I think it doesn't have huge scaling problems. Some of the analysis that gets run, for example, on the daily report page, they're quite involved. They need to pull in quite a lot of information. With a daily report page, you, know, you get it back in a matter of seconds. Um, so, uh, yeah, we haven't seen too much problems there. There's one, there's one issue in the, in the database scheme where it's a little bit inf inflexible to add extra metrics, let's, let's say, for example, next to the code size or the performance of the code. You want to measure another aspect of the generated code. Um, if you want to store it exactly in the database schema, it, that's a bit inflexible now. But it's also a bit hard to change that, that whole schema because you have to make sure that you, don't, you make scaling at least as good as it is right now. Well, so in a test suite, you've got something like 500 tests per run, and then you have a whole bunch of machines producing that, and then... Um, so it, it probably, you need to ask about how, how does it scale for number of tests stored in the database, or number of, for this daily report page, number of tests run on that particular day, because that's the amount of data that will, that will get analyzed. And yeah, I'm not sure. I. Uh, I think maybe we're, we must be somewhere around 10,000 to 100,000 tests in a day, probably. Just off the back of my head, order of magnitude. I'm assuming there must be people who go in order of magnitude higher, at least. But so, try it out and give feedback. <laughs> but the report page, it only analyzes the last n days. It doesn't analyze the whole thing. So, no. it, it doesn't need to scale to the number of tests. The only thing that reads all the tests is the, the final graph page which shows all the tests, but then they're just data points. That's, for, that's data points for a single program. Yeah. So yeah. Um, so yeah. you never have to analyze like all the data from all no, the no. time and etc. No, Should well, if someone would want to create another view where you analyze all of the data for all of the time, yeah. then yeah, that will be heavier. And you can scale the number of days, right? I think the production one today is three days max, and what you're showing is seven days max. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's just, uh, so let me go back. It's actually, so, <clears throat> you can change. there's, so if you look at here in the URL, it's a parameter there. Um, would like very small tweaks like this to just make it an input box on the web page, that would be really nice. It's not there, so uh, there's probably lots of tweaks that can be done, but, um, at least for myself, I'm a compiler developer and not an infrastructure developer like this, so I added stuff until my job got a lot easier. That's it. Um, yeah. So you said, you, you, the question is, can you use it with a JIT? Um, so it definitely, what the page you see on the screen now, any code generator you can use it with. Uh, where it gets more interesting probably is on the profile page, where you see this assembly. And then it depends, right now, LNT assumes that in the JSON file with data you produce, it has a format that looks like Linux perf. So you have a percentage on the line, and then some code next to it. It, does, um, um, it doesn't have to be an assembly instruction. So you're going to have to perf LLVM. Mm, so how you, get, how, how, of the JIT. how you get to the data from the JIT, I don't know, but if you have data that you can represent with a percentage of execution time with a line of code next to it, it can go in. Okay.
but it seems like that's it. Thank you very much.